Speaking of Bernie, oh my God, we can't talk enough about him. Bad blood apparently brewing within the Democrat Party. And that was long before AOC showed up. Bernie Sanders turned the establishment on its head in 2016, and the feud has reignited ahead of 2020 because they're not done yet. They got a lot to hash out. The New York Times put out a piece today titled Stop Sanders. Democrats are agonizing over his momentum. And in it, the paper claims, quote, some of the parties still harbor anger over the 2016 race when he ran against Mrs. Clinton and his ongoing resistance to becoming a Democrat. But his critics are chiefly motivated by a fear that nominating an avowed socialist would all but ensure Mr. Trump a second term. The critics haven't slowed Bernie down. He's leading most polls. And over the weekend, he wrote a letter to the Center for American Progress, a think tank founded and run by some of the Clinton's closest allies, accusing the organization of smearing him. So will the liberal elite try to destroy Bernie's presidential hopes like they did three years ago? With me now, former Ted Cruz campaign pollster and CEO of WPA Intelligence, Chris Wilson is back. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about this because you have, uh, you know, you talk about the factions within the, within the Democratic Party. Uh, you've also got them among those who are running for president. Right now is the most aggression and energy trained on Bernie Sanders. Well, it is. There's polling out from this weekend that showed him moving into the top position, which is when the Democratic Party has an avowed socialist leading the polling to become their nominee for president, you've got a lot of panic going on. So you have kind of three things going on here. You've got the 2016 concern of electability. They nominated someone in last time who was unelectable, and they don't want to do it again this time. The second thing is you've got the fact that the Sanders' supporters are outside of that entire structure. She was just talking about in the last segment. They're not Obama people. They're not Clinton people. They are just their hold on brand of people. And because of that, they don't respond well to this kind of on high Democrat establishment saying, hey, get out of the way. And the third part of this, I think, is just what you're seeing is an oppo dump coming from campaigns and campaigns are waiting in the Biden campaign in that they're just trying to release everything they can on Bernie Sanders. But what it gets down to is really the question of electability and the fact yes. that Democrats don't want to lose again in 20. And you don't think that Bernie Sanders is electable? Well, I don't know. I don't think that that's an established point. He won 22 point. I primaries. He, that's exactly and he had right. A lot of, he had a lot of resistance from the DNC, and they were in the tank with superdelegates and the leadership over there for Hillary Clinton. So and if think, it weren't for those factors, Bernie would have taken the nomination. That's exactly right. I think the other thing is that Republicans are myopic to just write him off as saying, oh, he's easy to defeat. I mean, the fact is he does have an energetic base. He will be able to raise a lot of money. He may be the one candidate on their side that can match Donald Trump fundraising ultimately if he were to receive the nominee. So I don't think anybody should be cheering on the Republican side for him to be the nominee because the last mm -hmm. thing we'll want to do is see him then become the Democrat's president, a socialist president of the United States. Yeah, I yeah, think I mean, but the same he, point. He faces a tough fight. However, Bernie has learned a thing or two because he's he's been through it. And he, he knows that nothing energizes uh, the people who are the biggest Bernie adherents. Uh, nothing mobilizes them like sticking fight. it to the Democrat establishment. That's exactly right. And, and that's, that's what, what he's, he's doing. doing. He's fundraising yeah. off of this, isn't he? He's fundraising off of it. He's building crowds off of it. He's been able, like I said, to rise all the way to the top of the polling because of it. And what he was also able to do, Kennedy, I think is remarkable, is he was able to change the rules of the Democratic primary. And now you have this front-loaded system. You only need 15 percent. And he's going to raise enough money that he's going to be able to blanket the airways in these large states like Texas that are proportional and California early on to where mm -hmm. he's going to get a lot of delegates coming out of those. He's going to be really tough to stop coming out of that first round of states. Let me ask you this. Um, how significant is it? that California moved their primary up? I think the question there is going to be that, the answer to that question is going to be determined by what kind of campaign Kamala Harris puts together. Mm -hmm. If she's able to win every congressional district in California, then it's not significant because it creates an, an ongoing and a longer process. Mm -hmm. But if Sanders is able to go in there and compete for some key choice districts, and, and you may remember that's how Texas was decided proportionally, and Marco Rubio was able to go into Dallas and take one district away from us on the Cruz campaign, mm -hmm. it still hurts my heart. But if he's able, if Sanders is able to do that and take, you know, three, four, five, ten districts, Away, then what it does is it, it backfires on what Democrats were trying to do in whenever they moved it to the beginning. There is uh, so much as this race crystallizes. The debates are going to tell us so much more, uh, but these top candidates are going to keep churning out uh, messages and right. bringing in Oppo. the money. Yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. right. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Always appreciate it. You bet. It. Thank you.